Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that I cover the Dioxys framework quite a bit. And the reason for this is so that you'll have enough examples to determine if the Dioxys framework is a good fit for your development needs. So whether you're developing for the web, desktop or mobile, my goal is to give you enough insight so that you can make an informed decision on whether the Dioxys framework can handle your project requirements. So in the next couple of videos, we'll explore some slightly more complex examples and we'll start by developing a simple shopping cart web application. But in today's video, we're going to look at real-time notifications using MongoDB's change streams to develop a simple chat application. Now, the benefit of using MongoDB in this use case is that we don't have to write any code to maintain client connections on the server. All we have to do is have a persistent connection to MongoDB and watch for changes on a collection. And so when we insert a document into the collection, the change stream will notify us of that event and we can pass that event back to the client. Another benefit is that we get to query the document so that we can have message history just like a real chat application. Okay, so enough talking, let's start writing some code. So the first thing that we want to do is create a full stack Deoxys web application. And now let's take a quick look at the cargo file to see what dependencies we need for this project. So aside from the Deoxys crate, we also need the following dependencies, Futures, MongoDB, Surdi, Surdi JSON, and Tokyo. Now take a look at MongoDB and Tokyo. These two libraries are marked as optional, but we do need to add them as dependencies to the server feature. Okay, so now that we have the dependencies that we need, let's go ahead and start coding the app. So here is the main.rs file and it contains the default code that you'll find when you create a full stack application. Now I have made some changes to this code, mainly just removing some unnecessary bits and also removing the code from the app component because we'll get back to this component later. Because first we want to start with a server side function that's going to stream the messages from MongoDB to the client. Now because this function returns a stream, we need to set the output to streaming text and the result should also be text stream. So now we have a function called message stream that is going to return a text stream back to the client. And the text stream that we're going to return is going to be a change event that's going to occur on a MongoDB collection. So essentially we need to continuously watch for changes that occur on a collection. Now MongoDB has a function to do this, but using it as is might stop the server from processing other requests. To solve this problem, we can watch for changes in a separate task using Tokyo spawn function. But this will leave us with another problem and that is how do we get the change event out of the task since the task is running continuously. Well, a common solution is to use an MPC channel to send the data from the task to another thread. In our case, we want to send the data back to the calling thread. So here we're using an unbounded channel from the futures crate and the receiving end denoted by Rx is going to go to the text stream, whereas the sender denoted by Tx is going to get moved into an asynchronous task. And we'll spawn this task using Tokyo spawn function. So now all we have to do is create a connection to our MongoDB database and start watching for change notifications on a collection. But first, let's go ahead and create a server-side variable to store our MongoDB connection string. Now, just a quick note on MongoDB. If you don't have a local instance, you can always get a free account by going to mongodb.com. And this is what I'm using for this example. Okay, so moving on, we can then establish a client connection using our connection string. And on this client, we can then connect to our database. And from the database, we can get the collection that we want to start watching change notifications on. Now, notice that the collection returns a message type. So let's go ahead and create this type. So this message type is very simple for this example and it only consists of a single field called message and it needs to derive Surdi serialize and deserialize. So with this type now in place, we can now start watching for changes on this collection using the watch method. And the watch method returns a change stream which we can use like an iterator to iterate over the change events. So here we're simply iterating over the change events and when an event occurs, we're checking to see if that event contains a full document. And if it contains a full document, we know that the event type was either an insert or an update because a delete event won't contain a full document. So now all we have to do is take the full document and serialize it into a JSON string. And then we can take the JSON string and send it back to the calling thread using the TX sender variable. So now our streaming function is complete, but there's no way to test it at the moment. So let's go ahead and write a send message function to start storing messages in our MongoDB database. So we'll create a server-side function called send message, and this function will take a single argument, which is the text that we want to save in our message collection. And then all we have to do is connect to the database and insert the message into the message collection using the message type. So we now have a simple function to store messages into our message collection, and this in turn will cause a change event to occur. And when this happens, all connected clients will get a copy of that message. Now we still don't have a way to test this yet, so let's go back to the app component and create a simple UI that we can use to post messages. So in the app component, we need a state to hold the message being entered and the UI will consist of a single text field and a button. And so when we click on the button, the send message function will get called using the value in the message state. Now I've made a few videos on how to manage state in Dioxys. So if you're not sure how to do this, check out my channel and hopefully one of those videos will help. Okay, so we now have a component that can post messages, but we still need to call the message stream function so that we can show the incoming messages. And to do this, we're going to use an asynchronous task. Now notice that we're spawning the task within the useEffect hook and the reason for this is so that we don't have any rendering issues when an incoming message arrives. 
So the spawn function will allow us to call an asynchronous closure. And in this closure, we're going to call the message stream function. And we know that this function returns a text stream. So calling into inner will give us a stream that we can iterate over. So all we have to do when a message arrives is to serialize the data into a message type and then add the message to a vector of messages. And here the vector of type message is stored into a state. So when we add a message to the state, the component will get re-rendered. And now finally, there's one last thing that we need to do, which is to iterate over the messages in the vector so that we can show them in the component. Okay, so with that small change, we are now ready to test the app. So let's go ahead and compile it and make sure it works. So here I have two browsers open to simulate two different users. And if I post a message into the first browser, we should see it come up on the second browser. Okay, so that works as expected. So the next thing that we want to do now is to retrieve a list of messages. And we can do that by creating another server-side function. So let's create a function called getMessages to return a vector of messages. And the code for this function is quite similar to the sendMessage function in that we need to create a database connection and then connect to the database. And then on the collection, we can call the find method to return all the messages in that collection. Now the find method will return a cursor of messages. So we need to iterate over the cursor and add the messages to a vector. And then we can return the vector to complete the function. And so now all we have to do is call the function in the app component. So here we're iterating over the messages returned by the get messages function and adding them to the messages state. And so now when we load the app, we'll be able to see all the messages that we previously entered. Okay, so let's compile and run the app again just to make sure it works. But this time I'm going to add a little bit of CSS jazz to make the app look a bit nicer because it is looking a bit bland at the moment. So as you can see, the previous messages that we entered is now showing. So we've been able to create a simple chat application just by leveraging MongoDB. Now, here's the bit that I should have really told you at the beginning of the video, and that is that this approach doesn't really scale very well. And that's simply because MongoDB's chain stream isn't really designed for this type of purpose. If you want real-time notifications, you should look into systems like Apache Kafka or Redis. And so that brings us to the end of this video. If you want to take a look at the code, you'll find the link in the description. And like always, if you found this video interesting, please consider giving it a like, and I'll see you all on the next video.